Warning. The language used on the real rush may be offensive to some viewers. Don't say I didn't fucking warn you. I'd like to take just a moment to dedicate this episode's opener to all the people who like to come out to the movie theater. How off that blow. So go ahead, break out your little baggies and your grams and shit, and go ahead, do a line. Do two lines. Shit, do three lines. Okay? Now that you're all cocaine to fuck up like it's 1980 fucking six, y'all amped. This will be your favorite part of the show. This is when we say, bang your head to the opening riff Shut up and sit down. Everybody, everybody knows that we here at The Real Rush do not condone the use of such things as cocaine. For anybody who knows your boy J-Dub knows that the only kind of candy that goes up these nostrils, baby, is the sweet old pixie sticks. Yeah, that flavorful sugar candy, y'all. Shit, that's how your boy prepped for the SATs and passed them shits back in the day. Pixie sticks. Back in Function's trade class, playing drug wars and shit on a TI-85. Because that's how Dora the Explorer said how to prep for and pass the SATs. I don't even remember Dora the Explorer was around at that time, but I damn sure saw some animation. You'll see some shit like that if you put enough pixie sticks into your brainstem. But that's a different story for a different day. What's happening, y'all? It is your boy J Dub, Le Movie Champion, and welcome to episode 68 of The Real Rush, right here on YouTube. First thing I want to get down to, real quick thing, that your boy, your boy did a thing this week, y'all. Your boy, after being a Regal Rewards member for the last three years, after we saw La La Land at the beginning of season one of The Real Rush, 2017. You know that anybody who's, you know, any of these reward points, you know, for any franchise theater, you accumulate so many rewards points, you can use them towards free movie tickets or free popcorns, free drinks and stuff like that. I always use mine towards the free movie tickets. And I usually do that towards the end of the year before my shits expire. Well, after that well ran dry this week, your boy went ahead and did the ultimate and signed up. Not just for Regal Unlimited, but the Regal Unlimited All Access Pass, which means that for a monthly fee, which ain't too, ain't too shabby, I don't believe, 24 bucks a month, your boy can go to any Regal anywhere. I do believe that's like worldwide and shit. Go see any movie at any time, no additional cost. Except for like 3D and IMAX and 4DX and stuff like that. There's like a small nominal surcharge for shit like that. Which means that at a monthly rate of 24 bucks a month, it pays for itself after just under two movies. Which, given what's on this Real Rush uh, episode's ticket, we saw all three of these movies at a Regal. One of them being the last redeemed free movie. The other two being the first two unlimited, which means it already paid for itself with, two, with those two movies right there. So the rest of the month, it's on Regal's dime, which means your boy just may have become Regal's worst nightmare. <laughs> they look at my profile, they'd be like, this motherfucker sees a lot of movies. They might have to change the rules or something. Hopefully not. Go, you know, grandfather your boy in, because he was here when it was set like this. Don't go start changing shit around. So, we'll see how this goes but so far it's looking like it's gonna work out quite well for your boy so thank you Regal for instituting such program next up uh, what's next up not on the actual ticket but what we gotta get to is we gotta talk about 
what went down at the Golden Globes last weekend, y'all. Some planets shattering moments there. What did we say last week on the ballot? 14 categories that your boy picked from, right? How many did your boy get right here at the Golden Globes? Your boy got six of the 14 categories correct. Those six categories being, we got both Beck's best picture uh, categories, both drama, we got 1917 for that, and we got Once Upon a Time in Hollywood for musical or comedy. We got director, we got Sam Mendes for director. We got foreign language film, that went to Parasite. We got Joaquin for best actor, drama, we're gonna get to a moment with Joaquin here in a second. That's one, two, three, four, five, and the last one being, we got Aquafina winning Best Actress, Musical or Comedy for her role in Farewell. So not only congrats to just the people that we picked, but congrats to everybody who won last Sunday or for even being nominated. That's the one thing that I love about watching award shows, possibly even more than like big sports events and stuff like that. Because you have so many things going into this that if you're passionate enough about entertainment, such as your boy, you really don't walk away disappointed at the end of the evening from watching a show like this. First thing I want to bring up, Olivia Coleman, she won for Best Actress for The Crown, which I have not seen. The, all the TV category stuff, I knew like one show there, that was Mr. Robot, and as I mentioned on the last episode, I've only seen the first season of that and some of the second season. But Olivia Coleman, I gotta hand it to her. Because every time she goes to accept an award for something, she looks so stoked and just so giddy as if she's winning an award for the first time. Just You can see just the passion just exuding from Miss Coleman. So congrats to you, Miss Coleman. The uh, next thing that I wanted to get up to here is... Ooh, I did love the, the, the part where Charlize Theron was talking about uh, back in the day fixing VHS tapes and she even mentioned she said and I quote being surgical with not the shit but being surgical with it and fixing VHS tapes with scotch tapes back in the day with scotch tape back in the day uh, I fell in love because I used to do the same shit so Miss Charlize if you just happen to be watching this just know that you know on a deeper on a deep enough level I, I believe that we do make some 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 bit of connection there Slide up in my in my YouTube DMs or my Instagram DMs. Just stay tuned for the end of the episode. I give away my, my info at the end of every episode. Joaquin Phoenix's speech was about to be the realest moment possibly in any type of awards history, and they cut the man shit short because, in my honest opinion, they sense that the man was about to drop some genuine realness bombs that people didn't want to actually hear in my opinion he was gonna he was gonna say it's not just about you know saying we need to go out here and get out and vote or we need to do this or we need to do that it's not about just getting up and making all these speeches stuff you got to actually take action for yourself so that's how you be a leader lead by example don't just stand up there and say like you got to do all this shit and then nothing really goes anywhere i think they sense where he was going with that but hey here on the real rush Unless somehow this episode somehow just cuts the fuck off by itself after like seven and a half, eight minutes or something. I think I may have just spoken for Mr. Phoenix right there. So, yeah. But not to get into all that mumbo jumbo, not to stir up any, any things there. Uh, let's go into some, uh, some bomb drops here. I had... Noah Baumbach winning Best Screenplay for Marriage Story. That went to Sir Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Congrats. Congrats, brother. Another big one here. Missing Link winning for Best Animated Feature. I did not see that coming. I do want to admit for some reason, and I should have fucking picked it. I saw it as like a dark horse. And with a dark horse feeling, usually... It's a tie between 
the Dark Horse and the one that I usually pick, and the Dark Horse usually wins. So I should have gone with Missing Link for Best Animated Feature. Any other bomb drops here? I, I don't believe so. So where is this? What what is what is all this really going to mean for? As far as the Oscars go, that's a damn good question. It's going to be really, 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 be really, really interesting to see how the Oscar nominations turn out this coming Monday morning. So your boy will be up and tuned in to see how those go. But until that point, let's go ahead and get on down to what is on this week's ticket episode 68 let's go ahead and get on down to the brass tacks for the three movies that i have reviewed for y'all this week let's go ahead and kick things off with the highly once again another highly acclaimed drama what i'm calling a last minute quote unquote for your consideration entry into the race for this year's oscars before the nominations get announced Come this Monday morning, I'm talking about the new drama from director Destin Daniel Cretton called Just Mercy, starring Michael B. Jordan, Jamie Foxx, and Brie Larson. And this is based on the true story of civil rights attorney Brian Stevenson, who goes to bat for a man, Walter McMillan, played by Jamie Foxx. So we got Michael B. Jordan and Jamie Foxx, respectively, and Brian Steven and Walter McMillan. Walter has been wrongfully, wrongfully convicted of murder down in Alabama. And it's up to Michael Jordan and his team of equal justice defenders to set things right. They're trying to set things right for people who've been wrongfully convicted that are sitting on death row and trying to get things made right before it's too late, before they get handed down their date. And that's it. Powerful story, last minute entry all the damn way. Now that's just for this area. This has already been playing in certain areas since Christmas Day. Man, I wish I could have seen this a couple weeks ago when it actually dropped uh, in, in a limited release setting. Wow. Michael B. Jordan putting on one of the best performances that I've seen him put on screen, which honestly, with a lot of people that I see this about, I've never seen Michael B. Jordan put on a bad performance on screen. Jamie Foxx holding it down. Brie Larson holding it down. Director Destin Daniel Cretton, known for Short Term 12, which I haven't seen yet, but I've heard nothing but great things about. That's on my list of things to see. His last effort, The Glass Castle, which also starred Brie Larson, which actually she was also in Short Term 12 as well. So. They, they made quite a couple, a number of collabos together, so they're, you know, well-versed in knowing each other's, uh, knowing how we, you, knowing each other's, you know, boundaries and such. And Brie Larson, when she's in a cretin film, seems to shine even more than, like, ever, even more than possibly she did in Room. As I was about to state, The Glass Castle, Mr. Cretton's last effort, wasn't very well-received, Quite honestly, I thought it was more, one of the more underrated films of that year. This should not be the case with Just Mercy. This is deserving of every single bit of acclaim that it is receiving. It will hit you right in the heartstrings, as one of the reviews stated in, the, in one of the TV spots. It's both heartbreaking and heartwarming. I have to 100 wholeheartedly, 100% wholeheartedly agree with this assessment. Check out Just Mercy. Just Mercy is this week's real rush pick for movie of the week, y'all. It had me in tears. I'm surprised that we just saw this a couple hours before I came on camera here this evening. I'm surprised my eyes are not still puffy from how hard some of the emotionally gripping true to life storytelling came off the screen and hit me I'm not sure if anybody else in the audience felt that same way but like I I can't stress enough powerful just mercy five stars I'm gonna go ahead and say five stars all the way go check it out bring the Kleenex it's a shirt soaker y'all be awesome be cool yeah be be ready for for some powerfully gripping shit 
Just Mercy. Playing everywhere, y'all. Now playing everywhere. Go check it out. And let's see, uh, let's see where it might land coming Monday. Hopefully it does, uh, it does get, get something. We'll, we'll see. It'll be interesting come Monday to see what gets swapped out. It's always interesting to see what gets swapped out for some of the streaming titles that may not qualify for Oscar nominations. So we'll see what happens come Monday. But in the meantime, Just Mercy playing everywhere. Catch it. Catch it uh, after this. After this episode after this episode because we still got two more reviews coming for y'all next up on this episode's real rush ticket let's get into some funny haha -ha. let's get into some funny haha -ha. and i want to talk about the new tiffany haddish rose burn vehicle like a boss like a boss we be doing reviews like a boss, like a boss. I be sitting in this chair like a boss, like a boss. I be wearing wrestling shirt like a boss, like a boss. Look at the new Rush Tron like a boss, like a boss. Speaking of the new Rush Tron, just take a look at that for a second. <coughs> Excuse me. The influence from that, I just want to say. Two influences. One, the old school HBO feature presentation if you know your 80s HBO shit you know what I'm talking about and it's just got a little bit of a night flight vibe to it as well so that's there's my digression but back to like a boss so in like a boss Hash and Burns star as two lifelong best friends who after so many years of being in business with each other they have developed their own line of beauty products and they do they get discovered by Salma Hayek she is the CEO of a monster beauty product company. And she wants to invest in Mia and Mel, played by Tiffany Haddish and uh, Rose Byrne. I forget which one is who or who, but forgive me, y'all. It's 2 o'clock in the morning as we film this episode right here. She wants to invest in their company. And while all is seemingly, you know, you know, to promote their name and whatnot, She's got her she's got her own little devious set of plans for wanting to invest in me and Mel's company. Now I have to admit, going in to like a boss, especially after seeing the same trailer over and over and over again for so many months, even the red band trailer that I saw once a couple weeks ago didn't really turn the tide for me. I have to honestly admit, I had a lot of doubts going into this movie. But, luckily for all of us, this is one of, the rare, one of the rare instances where both the trailers, both the green band and the red band, did not really have any of the funny parts that are in the movie in it. And the movie itself, like a boss, turned out to be 83 minutes of pure gold, raunchy, Hilariousnessnessnessness. I must stress the raunchy part. Don't bring the youngins to go see No Like a Boss. You're gonna have to explain some things to their now warped, fragile little minds after seeing this. But adult wise, and again, this is not just a movie for the ladies. I went by myself, I had myself a blast. Take your man or anybody. Go see this movie. Like a boss. Hilarious all the way, y'all. Out of nowhere, surprisingly hilarious all the way. Just be prepared once again for some shocking shit. But it's Haddish and it's Rose Byrne at their goofiest. And, and Salma Hayek at her most, one of her most devious is, 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 roles that I've seen her in. Yeah. Like a boss. Playing everywhere, y'all. Sleeper pick for this week's episode of The Real Rush right here on YouTube. Like a boss. Playing everywhere. Check it out, y'all. Have yourself a good time. I don't think y'all be disappointed. Pardon me, boy. Is that the Chattanooga Choo Choo? And last but most certainly not least on this episode's Real Rush ticket is the new science fiction horror joint called Underwater. And Underwater follows a team of underwater miners 
They're they're drilling and shit. They're trying to drill to the core of the earth or some shit. You know, expedition, go exploring. You know how these kind of movies usually go. But now I must I must say that their 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 mining station seven miles below the below the earth's surface, y'all. That's some pretty deep shit. So when their mining station collapses, for lack of a better term, just starts crumbling to shit. The survivors trying to figure out what the fuck is going on here. So they got to figure out how to get from their broken station to a different one so they can get back up to the Earth's surface. But what they don't know is that waiting for them outside of their broken station, just waiting for them in the deeps of the underwater are these crazy ass creatures. Boom. Just like Like a Boss. I had some doubts going into this one because it, it is January. It's what has been generally known as a movie dump month for quite a number of years. And I thought that this was going to fall right into the same category. But quite honestly, same as Like a Boss, I thought this turned out to be quite the decent sci-fi horror. The two things that I would have tweaked about it a little bit is that at certain moments, the, the screenplay, so the narrative, and the editing was a little jumpy at points. There was a little bit of a disconnect at points. So there were a little bit plot holes and a little bit of editing holes. Just just a little minor. Nothing too terribly big that would distract from the movie. But other than that, again, quite the decent sci-fi horror. I felt that it had a little bit of a Predator vibe almost to it. And I'm talking about the original 1987 Predator, y'all. I even like this and, and given that it's got Kristen Stewart in, people are already shitting on it just because she's in it. Stop hating on Kristen Stewart, y'all. She actually holds it down in underwater in quite a almost film noir type style that she brings to that that her presence brings to the screen. And so I stop hating on Kristen Stewart. That's number one. But uh, number uh, underwater, yeah, I like this better than 2017's Life. With Ryan Reynolds and Jake Gyllenhaal, which was going to be fucking awesome. Remember that shit? And it turned out not to be so fucking awesome. I mean, it was okay, but I thought that I think Under the Water might have just been a little bit higher on the decent scale, decency scale than life. So if that's not a big takeaway from that, I don't know what is. I would actually like to go ahead and add that. Normally with a movie like this, you're expecting me to say, matinee this one at best. No. I did not mind paying full price for Underwater. Once again, the screenplay at parts, it's a little holy, not in a religious way. It gets a little cheesy, but hey, I mean, these kind of movies, these type of monster survival movies, you got to have a little bit of B-movie cheese in this factor. You got Kristen Stewart in it. You got Vincent Cassell. You got T.J. Miller up in it. So you know that his cheese humor is going to bring some shit to the table. And he's awesome in it. Yeah. Decent. Underwater, y'all. Playing everywhere. I would say check it out. And when you go to check out Underwater or any movie in the theater, make sure that you leave the cocaine at home, y'all. This is where the coke part from the opener comes in. Because I sat next to two drunken coke heads at the goddamn movie theater. Which is all well and good. I mean, they were, they were nice peoples. And if, I feel like I'm like destined to meet people like this. Or have experiences like this along the way. Because if I didn't, then I wouldn't have awesome fucking stories like this to tell y'all. So yeah, they were decent folk, but damn, you come to the movie theater that amped up, there's no way, there's no fucking way that you're going to be able to sit still and, you know, keep your mouth shut throughout the movie. Because they failed at that before the fucking previews even finished. Just loudness and... And obnoxiousness and, and and pointing at the screen and whatnot. Even during the movie, like I kept I kept seeing like fingers and stuff and shit coming from this point of view for me. That trying to grab shit. The movie's not even in fucking 3D. 
Okay, this is an avatar that we're watching. This is this is, I don't even know if there's a 3D version of this movie and they just happened to walk into the wrong showing or something. But they they were pointing shit at the screen as if they were pointing a finger to the moon. Don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss out on all the heavenly glory. Bruce Lee said that shit in one of my favorite all-time goddamn movies, Enter the Dragon, and I fucking believe it, y'all. Y'all were focusing too much on the finger and what was on it and what was actually going on the screen, man. Now, the poor couple, once again, they, they seemed really nice, and they left about an hour into the movie. And last week... After I saw The Grudge, remember I told you about the douchebags behind me that were sitting and chatting it up and whatnot. I was hoping that they wouldn't come back. But these folk, I was actually kind of hoping to see them after the movie because one dude said, watch our stuff for us. They left behind a big ass bucket of popcorn and big ass drink and everything. Just left that all behind. So you tally all that up. So big ass bucket of popcorn, big ass drink, that's got to run at least, at least 10 to 15 bucks. Then, to get into the movie, two people, 15 bucks a pop, that's 45 to 50 bucks gone, y'all. Gone. And for what? For what? So calm that shit down. If you want to do that shit, that's what Netflix and chill is for. Do that shit at home. If you want to bring yourself to the theater, I mean, you, you got to be able to, like when some people say, you know, when you come to the bar, you got to be able to, you know, hold down your liquor then you'll be able to hold yourself down like you've been somewhere before, but don't be coming all up like it's goddamn Captain EO down at the Epcot Center, y'all. That, that, that shit, that shit ain't cool. And you're lucky that you sat next to, to, to somebody who, who, you know, has some empathy. Because I, I, didn't, I didn't feel the douchiness coming off him like I felt the, the dudes at the grudge last week. They were, these were actually good kind of folk. They were just a little bit too fucked up. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. They happy to see this. It was a pleasure meeting y'all. Hope y'all cool. Long story short. Underwater. Check it out, y'all. And this is the one, this is the pick for the week that if you want to get back to your boy about, get back to your boy. We will converse on it, on what you thought about it. And I think that this movie just may change some people's impressions of Miss Kristen Stewart, if they are already not on, you, you either love Kristen Stewart or you hate her, apparently. So, boom. Underwater, playing everywhere. Check it out, y'all. I miss anything. But goddamn. Nope, sure didn't. So it's at this point in our episode where we go ahead and say, that's a wrap. For episode 68 of The Real Rush right here on YouTube is at, also at this point in every episode. Well, well, not in every episode, but you know what time it is. We just a week away from the third Friday of the month bandit show, y'all. Coming to y'all live from the Stagecoach Theater Company, Friday, January 17th at 7.30 p.m. Come out and see your boy performing with his bandits. Come get your laugh on for two hours. Come forget about all the bullshit that's going on in the world for two hours. Tickets are available online as we speak. $12 online, $15 at the door. But as always, I recommend that you go ahead and get your tickets online so you can secure your spot. Secure your spot at the table on a warm, inside of a warm, cozy confines on a cold January night. And plus, if you go ahead and get your tickets online, use the promo code John, my name, all caps, wear that shit out, you get yourself a discount. So where can you go online and find your tickets? You can find your tickets online at... StagecoachTC.com slash Stagecoach dash bandits. Once again, that is Stagecoach T is in time, C is in coach dot com slash Stagecoach dash bandits. Promo code John J O H N. That's my name. All caps. Wear that shit the fuck out. Come out. Have yourselves a good time, y'all. But also next weekend, come join us back here. Episode 69 of The Real Rush coming back to y'all right here on YouTube for our season 3 finale next weekend, y'all. And it looks like we're going to have three movies on the ticket review for y'all next weekend.
So episode 69 will have a review for y'all. Bad Boys for Life. Long, long, long away. How many years has it been since the last one? 17 years almost since Bad Boys 2 came out. Hell yeah, we're going to be there front and center to see that shit. We're also going to have a review for you. Doolittle. That's looking quite cute and quaint. And it looks like it's probably going to make me cry at some points too, so can't wait for that one. And we also have Les Miserables, which was up for Best Foreign Language Film at the Golden Globes. What's going to happen with that category when we head into Monday's Oscar nominations? We'll find that out on Monday, but as far as Lady Biz and Rob go, we'll have that review for you, episode 69, along with Bad Boys for Life and Doolittle. But until then, as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, any shit like that for your boy, feel free to type those on into the comment section of the YouTube page where you are viewing this week's episode right here, right now. For those of you, to those of you who have subscribed to The Real Rush right here on YouTube thus far, I want to thank you for having done so. Thank you for being your loyal subscribers. If you haven't done so yet, what the hell are you waiting for? You want to be the first to know when your boy drops a new episode? And don't forget, there's never a bad time to spread love, y'all. And spread the word of the real rust, just like everybody should be spreading love these days. So hug a motherfucker and tell him about the real rush. And also let your peoples know that not only does your boy come on the real rush with the latest and greatest in movie reviews, but the real rush also has replay value as well. So any movie that's come out since eh, roughly about late, early, no, late September 2018, early October 2018, so about the last year and a half or so, and some change, give or take a few months. You want to know what your boy thought about it. You want to get an honest to good review on it. All you got to do is go up to the YouTube search bar at the top of the page here. Type in quotation marks, The Real Rush, followed by outside of quotation marks, the name of the movie that you're looking for, and then boom, got yourself an instant movie review on demand for you because your boy J-Dub, Lead Movie Champion, and The Real Rush has your cover for life, son. And as always, you can follow your boy on Instagram for my live movie check-ins as they occur. And that is at J-Dub Champion, hashtag The Real Rush. And for The Real Rush, ladies and gents, I am your boy J-Dub. Thank you for joining us here for episode 68 right here on The Real Rush right here on YouTube. Remember, when you're at the movies, chill the fuck out. Don't be doing all the chitting and the chatting. And looking at the smartphone and checking the time on the smartwatches, and now I have to include this. Leave the goddamn blow at home. Alright? I guarantee you that any conversation, any text messages, the time, and yes, even your goddamn drugs, all that shit will be waiting for you after the movie's all said and done. I guarantee it. Enjoy yourselves while you're at the movies. Maybe not too much. But enjoy yourselves while you're at the movies, ladies and gents. Have fun, y'all. Love J-Dub. Astronauts to the moon. Eh, 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 eh.